Cynthia Rowland, author presentation by Bailey Pendergrass. Cynthia Rowland was born in Hopewell, West Virginia, to John Toon Smith and Latrell Smith with the maiden name Rowland, which is the name that Cynthia Rowland uses as a pen name. Cynthia's parents separated when she was just four years old, and she was sent to live with her mother's parents in Cool Ridge, West Virginia. During this time, her mother attended nursing school and was able to visit her a few times a year. During this time in her life, she grew up in the Appalachian regions of the United States during the 1960s. She grew up in a very depressed economic environment, and her grandparents and extended family and kind neighborhood folks provided a nurturing, safe, extended family, and they were able to be there for her when she needed it. Four years later, she moved back with her mom, and they relocated nearby in Beaver, West Virginia. There had been no libraries or bookstores of any kind in Cool Ridge, and there were also none here in Beaver, so she had never seen or been to a library when she was young. After receiving her degrees from the University of Charleston and Kent State University, she got married and was unable to find a job in her field. So she first worked as a waitress and then later became a librarian in West Virginia in a town called Huntington. This is where she became acquainted with children's books. This is when she began to teach part-time English at Marshall University. During this time, she also wrote her first book, When I Was Young in the Mountains. Her hobbies include reading, of course, going to the movies, spending time with her friends and family, and walking her dog. Some interesting facts about this author include the fact that it only took her one hour to write her first book titled When I Was Young in the Mountains. She also has all of her books based on and inspired by memories as a child growing up with her grandparents in the Appalachian Mountains. Her son is named after a famous author, Nathaniel Hawthorne. Many of her book ideas are influenced by childhood memories. Many of her books include topics like death, such as pet death or another death in the family. She has two books about animal death, pet death, called Cat Heaven and Dog Heaven. She also has many books dealing with family and other emotions including some chapter books. Another book that Cynthia Rylant wrote that dealt with death and emotions is called Missing May, and it discusses a little girl who misses her aunt who has passed away and tries to find her in the garden, metaphorically speaking, as in trying to find signs of her or ways to remember her, that kind of thing and she has to deal with the loss and process it and figure out how to go about life. All of Cynthia's books have unique artistic flares. This is because she has many different artists that illustrate her books, which gives it a great variety to all of the different ways in which a book can be talked about and viewed and visualized based on the artist's ideas. Some of these books can be seen as more watercolor textured or some can be more realistic. Specifically, the artist or illustrator and Cynthia Ryland have to decide what their goal is. 
what the emotion they're wanting their readers to feel as they read the book. This helps them decide how exactly the book is going to be designed, the, the illustration specifically. When I Was Young in the Mountains was written by Cynthia Rowland and illustrated by Diane Good. The first book that Cynthia Rowland ever wrote is called When I Was Young in the Mountains. This is the book that only took her an hour to write. This is about her life growing up, being raised by her grandparents in the Appalachian Mountains. She talks about the life in the woods and the different ways that growing up can differ from children today. There are many ways that Cynthia Rowlett writes that living and growing up in the woods can be different from it is nowadays. One of which is she discusses how she had to walk through the grass to the Johnny house to go to the restroom, which is different than how we use the restroom today. She paints a very unique picture of how children had to collect pails of water from the whale to heat the bathtubs and fill them for bath time. She also discusses how they went to church in the schoolhouse on Sundays and how the school doubled as a church for the community. Another interesting aspect of this book is that at one point she discusses a family's encounter with a big black snake in the garden and how grandma had to kill it when it wouldn't leave. And so once they killed it, the four grandkids that lived in the mountains draped the snake, the long dead black snake, around their necks for a photograph. She includes many snippets of how important and how strong her relationship is with her grandparents because of how she grew up. She finishes off the story by saying that she would never want to go to the ocean or anywhere else in the world because the mountains were enough for her and it was right where she wanted to be. The Relatives Came Written by Cynthia Rowland and illustrated by Stephen Gamel. This book starts out with a rainbow colored station wagon coming up to, with relatives to greet the family. When they arrive, they all hug and hug and hug and pass all kinds of love. And then summer begins. The book continues with explaining how when the relatives come to town, they have all kinds of summer things to do. They tend to the garden, they eat all kinds of fruits like strawberries and melons. Then they spend the nights playing the banjo and strumming guitars and having a good time together as a family. This book wraps up by saying that when it's time to leave, they were all sad knowing that they wouldn't see each other for a while, but they had hope knowing that next summer they would all be back together again. Scarecrow, written by Cynthia Ryland, illustrated by Lauren Stringer. This book starts out with describing how a scarecrow is made specifically where some of the supplies come from, such as old raggedy coats and pants, stuffing from pillows, and buttons from clothes that no longer are used because they don't have a button. <laughs> then the book describes the reasons it's nice to be a scarecrow, such as it's a certain piece hanging around the, gar the garden all day, and taking in the silence and the cool air and the friendliness towards birds. Speaking of birds, the book further describes the relationship between a scarecrow and the crows. The crows all perch alongside the scarecrow so they can chat all day. 
Then throughout the book, it also explains the different ways in which a scarecrow can be used besides to supposedly scare off birds from the garden. There's one part that the scarecrow's hat is used to house mice and a place for birds to rest. The story closes with describing how the scarecrow has long deep thoughts and the weather changes and he has a job which is to protect the home and the garden and the people who rely on it. Since I've learned so much about Cynthia Ryland and all that she has accomplished in her life, I have become very impressed with her and all that she has overcome. I think that a lot of her books are able to help young children and adults even deal with some pretty hard things such as pet loss or losing a family member or arguing with a friend, changes in season, other things like that that can be curious for children and adults. I would definitely recommend any of Cynthia Ryland books to somebody because they are very, very good. While researching the professional and personal life of Cynthia Ryland, I discovered a lot about her childhood and growing up. I also found some quotes that she has said in interviews and in books that have really stood out to a lot of people. This one in particular stood out to me. Every person is able to add beauty, whether by growing flowers or singing or cooking luscious meals or raising sweet pets. Every part of life can be art by Cynthia Ryland.